The casual player base is the backbone of any ARPG, whether it be Diablo 4 or Path of Exile, and a large amount of the players haven't actually made it to the end game yet in Diablo 4 due to working a full-time job, taking care of their wife and kids, or any other reasons that I have where they can't actually log in and play. So with that in mind, and strongly due to this comment right here, I decided to level up a fresh brand new Necromancer using a few different builds along the way and clear the first capstone dungeon. So we're going to go over the builds, we're going to go over the gear that I used, which only uses um, aspects from the Codex of Power, and finally the leveling route path that I chose to take. Um, I chose one that would be more fun for me, maybe not the most efficient, but I mean, I'm playing games to have fun, not to make it a new chore, and I'm sure grinding the same dungeon a hundred times probably would have been more efficient, but for me, I would have not enjoyed it, and I probably would have quit this halfway through because that's just not enjoyable. Now, because you guys have been so amazing and shown so much support, I was actually approached for my very first sponsorship deal, which is going to happen in about 10 seconds. So I test out the game before accepting it. So I didn't want to actually promote a game to you guys that I didn't actually think was fun. So without further ado, here's the sponsorship. Today's video is sponsored by Bloodline Heroes of Lithus. This game fuses RPG and gotcha together and adds a twist with their air or child system where you can create your own unique legendary champions by combining the bloodlines of elves, demons, demigods, orcs, dwarves, lichens, dragonborn, vampires, and more. This game is free to play so scan the QR code up in the top left corner or click the link in the description to start your download now. The best part of Bloodline Heroes of Lithus is the seriously insane graphics, giving you a gorgeous game to play on a mobile phone or tablet. I mean, just look how amazing this looks on such a large screen. And unlike other mobile games out there, Heroes of Lithus has constant updates. New bloodlines with unique abilities and champion forms for each gender are released every two weeks. The graphics and gameplay are always being improved so the game always looks and feels top notch. My favorite part of the game is the PvP. You build up your power level, you take it into the arena, and you face off against other players from all over the world. What really sets this game above all other mobile games out there is you can customize your champions by marrying any two bloodlines together to create over 1,000 fantasy bloodlines. The hybrids inherit not only the talents and traits of their parents, but also the unique appearances of the parents get fused together to make some really, really cool looking new champions and really powerful. I was able to get you guys a starter pack worth $20, which comes with one summoning crystal, 100,000 gold and 100 diamonds. An extra bonus goes to the first 30 people who leave their in-game account ID and username in the pinned comment of this video. You're going to receive a free legendary female orc warrior named Ugro. She's one of the best warriors to carry you through the early parts of this game. So go download the game using the QR code or the link in the description now. And Bloodline, thank you so much for sponsoring today's video. You guys go download the game for free using my link and I will see you all in game. Thanks again Bloodline for sponsoring the video. Now, as you guys can see, I am level 44 in world tier three. And I did the entire thing solo so that it would be in the spirit of the video of how a casual gamer would be able to level up and complete the first capstone dungeon. So I decided to not use any of the aspects from my endgame necromancer and only use aspects from the codex of power because I felt that that would be the fairest way to do things and all of those aspects that I used none of them were the seasonal aspects. I wanted it to only be aspects that you could go and obtain from the dungeons as you were leveling up and I made it a point not to actually go and put the aspects on until I had completed that dungeon specifically for the aspects. Now, if you hit the Y key and go into your aspects of power, you can actually find all the aspects. So anything with the leaf on is obviously a seasonal one and those are not the ones we're going to be using, but go show only my class. And then you can see the ones that are specifically for your class. Now, if there's one you don't have, you can actually highlight over it and then just click it and it will Put a pin on your map and draw a nice little line to it and show you this is where the dungeon is so that you can then you know port over if you have the waypoint if not you can run to the waypoint get the waypoint which is also going to get you some of your renown which will get you your skill points as well and i would highly suggest as you're playing through to focus on you know exploring the game doing the strongholds doing some side dungeons some quests whatever you feel is funnest for you and just enjoy the game as, as much as you can because it's a game and it's all about having fun anyways. So do the renowned things because their whole point of putting the renown in the game was to get you out to explore the entire game that they built. So that would be my suggestion. There's no point in grinding to the end game just to go back and farm renown. Just enjoy it on your way up through anyways. You get your renown and it'll also get you your, your five additional skill points. 
or technically 10, but I'm assuming everybody went and got the statues of Lilith and uncovered the entire map before the season started so that they would already start off with five points anyways. With that being said, let's hop over into the build real quick. So I have the 1 to 25, which is going to be Bone Spear. Once you hit level 25, which is basically when you're going to get to your, your key passive at the very bottom of the tree, you're going to either stick with Bone Spear or you're going to switch to Shadow Blight Minions. My preference is the Shadow Blight Minions because I like minions on a Necromancer. I feel like a class that's built around raising the dead should be raising the dead rather than sacrificing them. But again, this is my way of playing. It might not be yours. If you want to sacrifice them, by all means, follow this build. But we're going to start off with the 1 to 25 build. And as you can see, I did not put any of the armor pieces in because level 1 to 25, you're just going to be picking up stuff off the ground and equipping it if it's better than what you're currently wearing. If you do happen to run some dungeons and get some aspects, you can throw those onto your rare pieces and it's just going to help your build feel a lot better and going to make your killing more efficiently as you're leveling up. With the Malignant Hearts, which is the seasonal mechanic, I went with the Sacrilegious Heart because it's going to make it so that you're going to use your corpse skills that are equipped on your bar. Now, the way that this works, and I was wrong on my previous video, and I do apologize for that, but the way that this works is it's going to cast Raise Skeleton first if you don't have all of your minions active. Then it's going to cast Corpse Tendril second every three seconds so that it'll basically Corpse Tendril every three seconds for free, and then Corpse Explosion if the other two parameters are already met. So if you don't have all of your minions active, it's going to use Raid Skeleton to get your minions up and running. And then it's going to cast Corpse Tendrils every three seconds. So every three seconds, it'll just auto Corpse Tendril onto a corpse if there's one close by. And then the remaining two seconds, it's going to cast Corpse Explosion and it's going to create your Miasma Puddles on the ground, which we're going to get to in a second. The Decrepit Heart is what I went for the Blue Heart, and it's going to make it so between zero and four enemies, Whenever you're low level, it's going to be either three or four. Try to get the three because it's going to make it so you can have the decrepify aura around you more often. But basically, it's going to surround your character in a big blue circle that is a decrepify aura. And what that's going to do is it's going to slow all the mobs and make them do less damage to you. And the way I like to play minion builds and necromancer in general is I like to play up close and in the fight. And I like to stun them and just blow everything up around me. As you get later and later in, into the higher tier Nightmare Dungeons and, and stuff like that, you're going to start going to a more ranged build with the minions because you don't want stuff on top of you because you might just die. But this is only 1 to 50, so you don't have to worry about it. You can stack them right on your head. It's not a big deal. All right, for the Skeletal Warriors, so at the very beginning, when you first start the game, you're going to go with upgrade number one for the Skirmishers because that's all you're going to have unlocked. What this is going to do is it's going to give you an additional Skeletal Warrior, so they're just going to be doing more and more damage because you're going to have, well, a fifth Warrior instead of four. So that's kind of nice. Whenever you do unlock Reapers, you're going to switch over to number two because they're going to have a 15% chance to give you a free corpse. Also, their big wind-up attack they can do every 10 seconds does have a chance to proc a lucky hit. So that's very nice. For the Skeletal Mages, when you lock these at level 15, you're going to go and you're going to grab uh, Shadow Mages number 2 because they're going to fire an additional bolt, which is just free damage. So this is very nice. The other one has a chance to stun, which is nice, but it's a 10% chance, and I'd rather just have the free consistent damage that constantly happens. All right, on to the build. So I did make one small mistake here in the leveling path, and that is Initiate's Bone Splinters. That's actually supposed to be Acolyte's Bone Splinters. But if I click this little button here, it's going to literally reset the entire build, and I don't want to deal with that. So I just changed it. Um, even though it says it here, it's actually supposed to be Acolyte's. So make that adjustment as you're going through. So you're going to go Bone Splinters into Enhanced Bone Splinters. Then you're going to move on down, because that's going to unlock your core ability. So you're going to go for Bone Spear. All the way up to supernatural bone spear is going to make the first enemy hit vulnerable and vulnerable damage is very very big in this game finally we're going to come up we're going to grab acolytes bone splinters not initiates and then we can move on down further most people here will grab hewed flesh you don't need corpses on the ground until you have an, an ability on your bar that can actually use them neither bone splinters or bone spear use corpses so I like to put one point into Corpse Explosion first, then come back and grab Hewed Flesh to put more corpses on the ground. I like to have an ability to use the corpses before just having corpses being wasted on the ground. Also, as you're shooting off Bone Spears, you're going to kill mobs really, really quickly. So you're going to be constantly producing corpses anyways, even before Hewed Flesh. 
All right, so once you have the first point into Corpse Explosion, put your three points into Hued Flesh, then we're going to go for a Blighted Corpse Explosion because it's going to create a big pool on the ground that's just dot damage, and it's free damage. Uh, any mobs that get aggroed and start walking into it are just going to start dying, and it's really, really nice. From here, we're going to go and we're going to have three points into Grim Harvest and then one point into Fueled by Death. We're going to get the remaining two points later on, but this is our focus now, so we can come on down and grab Corpse Tendrils into Plague Corpse Tendrils. It's going to make mobs vulnerable for three seconds. Corpse Tendrils itself, when it AoE grips them in, it stuns them for three seconds. They're going to be stunned and vulnerable for three seconds straight. It's absolutely amazing. Plus, with the Malignant Heart that auto casts it, you're going to chain stun the mobs, which is insane you can basically just keep them cc'd while killing them it's really really fun then we're going to come up and grab the remaining two points of fueled by death and this is going to make it so obviously whenever you consume a corpse with corpse explosion which will be auto casted with the malignant heart you're going to have a nine percent increased damage for six seconds which is going to be constantly happening throughout the fight so you just a constant nine percent damage increase Go put two more points into Bone Spear, bring it up to rank three, which is going to unlock our ultimate section of the build. Now, we're going to put one point into Inspiring Leader, two points into Death's Defense so your skeletons don't die as quickly, put another point into Inspiring Leader, and then we're going to put the three points into Bone Storm to get Supreme Bone Storm, which is going to make it so that we have a 20% increased critical strike chance while Bone Storm is active. Put one point into Bonded in Essence, then finally max out Inspiring Leader, and then put your final point into Death's Defense. You're either now level 25 if you had the 10 points, or level 30 if you only had the 5. That's why I say to focus on doing your Renown and just exploring the area and having fun, because Renown just comes by doing things in the game that are fun. So I would suggest doing that, which is going to give you your Renown faster so that you can get your additional 5 points. So then you would be at level 25 instead of level 30. So now here's where you need to make a choice. Do you stay Bone Spear and sacrifice your minions or do you switch to a Shadow Blight build and keep your minions? This is what you need to decide because this is what is going to decide which build you choose from here. So back to the builds. If you decide to stay Bone Spear, this is the build you're going to use. Now I did put some actual... Um, aspects in here i did not actually play this build i just threw it in here because it would be a nice quality of life if you do get it to drop by all means put it onto one of your pieces of gear it's going to make your survivability much better especially since you don't have minions that are going to be tanking a bunch of mobs for you anymore so if this drops for you by all means put it on um but this is not one that's from the codex of power and is not technically required i just put it on there it's a nice quality of life Aspect of Disobedience is in the Codex of Power. You can put it on the chest, legs, wherever you want to put it. You can put it on the helm, doesn't matter. Um, you can just put it onto any defensive piece of gear and uh, away you go. So Splintering Aspect is going to make it so, you know, Supernatural Bone Spear makes it so your first target is vulnerable. And this Splintering Aspect is going to make it so all additional targets are going to become vulnerable behind the first target. It's not as good as it was in the Eternal Realm because it was just working for all mobs. Everything became vulnerable. They fixed it, so it's not as effective as it used to be, but it's still really good. All right, onto the amulet. I like to put Aspect of Grasping Veins on the amulet. It's going to increase Critical Strike Chance and Critical Strike Damage. And anything that's on the amulet has a 50% bonus to the stats that it has. A two-handed weapon has a 100% bonus, and amulet has a 50% bonus, so... I like to put Grasping Veins on the Amulet because it's going to give you more Critical Strike Chance and damage. And uh, Sacrificial Pact I put onto one of the rings because you're going to be sacrificing your minions with this build. Sorry. You, you can't run this build effectively with minions. It will actually hurt your damage and slow down everything for you. For the hearts, I have the Sacrilegious again because you're going to be close enough to corpses that it's going to be actively casting corpse tendrils and corpse explosion we don't have minions so it's not going to be casting ray skeleton obviously so it's just going to be chaining it's going to go corpse tendrils explosion explosion tendrils explosion explosion tendrils and so on and so forth throughout the fight as long as you're relatively close it'll just keep doing that over and over which will help to keep mob chain stunned and vulnerable and then i put in the picana heart i mean technically whatever heart you feel like putting in here doesn't really matter all that really matters is the sacrilegious for this one because we're not looking for the decrepify aura because we don't want to be close to mobs with this build because we're gonna die i put this one in because you are doing critical strikes so you might as well get a little bit of free damage from doing critical strikes that's why i put the picana in there here are your abilities the only one that's different is you're no longer going to have ray skeletons you're now going to have decrepify because you're going to be casting it instead of having the aura because if you're close to enemies you're probably going to just 
die. Uh, we're going to sacrifice the skirmishers because it gives you critical strike chance. We're going to sacrifice the cold mages for the vulnerability and sacrifice the iron golem for the critical strike damage. Now onto the build. As you can see, most of it is the same. We're going to be picking up more nodes as we go from what we had. We're, we're going to grab three points into unliving energy to increase our maximum essence. And we're going to grab one point into imperfectly balanced. If they ever decide to fix the uh, imperfectly balanced to where it has three points again, the build will change, obviously, but that has not been addressed yet. So it is what it is. We are going to take the points out of Blighted Corpse Explosion because we only need this to generate essence for us. So we don't actually really care so much about having puddles on the ground because Bone Spear is going to be doing all of our damage. These points still remain the same. Uh, Amplify damage. We're going to take Death's Reach now because uh, it's going to increase damage to distant enemies. This stays the same. We're going to put three points in Serration, Compound, Fracture, and Avulsion. This is going to give you a whole bunch of damage with your bone skills. We're going to take out all of these points here because we're going to be sacrificing. So stand alone, three points, and three points into Memento Mori to increase your sacrifice bonuses, which you also get more sacrifice bonus from the Sacrificial Aspect. And then finally, our last point will go into Ossified Essence. Makes it so your bone skills deal percent increased damage for each point of essence you have above 50 upon cast which is also why we have unliving energy because that's going to make it so that you have more essence also on your gear if you get any of your drops that have increased maximum essence throw that on it's going to just increase your damage for free all right so if you don't want to lose your minions like me you're going to want to go for the shadow blight minion build you, there are other builds out there you can do. This is just my preferred build because I really like Shadow Blight. I like the thought of a Necromancer that has minions that you raise from the dead and just rot damage. It just feels good to me. Coldbringer's Aspect is going to make it so your skeletal mages cast a blizzard, deals whatever percent, whatever damage every six seconds. And it's going to chill enemies, which is a CC, which is nice. It's going to make it so they're walking towards you nice and slow, so they're not going to get hit as often. Aspect of Disobedience, throw that onto one of your pieces. I always like to have mine on my pants. I don't know, which is a personal preference. Um, aspect of Reanimation, again, all these aspects are from the Codex of Power. So all these are aspects that you can just go and complete a dungeon and get for free and use them forever. Skeletons gain increased damage while alive up to 40% after 10 seconds. So as long as your skeletons have been alive for 10 seconds, they're just going to do more damage. It's really nice. It's just free damage just for having this aspect or something. If you have a two-handed weapon, I would put it on that because it's going to make it so that they do 60 to 80%, which is really nice. Or if you want to be tankier, you can run with a one-hander and a shield. It'll make you a lot tankier, and you're still going to do plenty of damage for all of this. I put Blighted Aspect on the amulet because it's going to increase your damage uh, after the Shadow Blight key passes has done damage 10 times. Now remember, on the amulet, you get 50% bonus. So it goes from 50 to 120 to 75 to 180. Now, if this is coming from the um, Codex of Power, it's always at the very bottom. So it's going to be 75% increased damage. But that's 75% increased damage for free because Shadow Blight is constantly doing damage. Right? Aspect of Plunging Darkness. So Bone Prison is going to spawn a pool of blight within it for, for six seconds. And what that's going to do is it's going to give you blight for free without having to cast it on your bar. Bone Prison spawns a lot of lucky hit, which is going to generate more corpses, which means you're going to be able to cast more corpse explosion, which puts more dot puddles on the ground, which is going to trigger more and more shadow blight. And the damage just kind of ramps up and just keeps on rolling higher and higher and higher. It's really nice the way that all of this synergizes together. The Sacrilegious Heart, again, walking near a corpse automatically activates it. I went over that in the previous part. Um, Decrepify Aura on the ring. Again, it, it's going to give you Decrepify for free, which is going to make all of your cooldowns come back faster, which means you're going to be able to cast more Bone Prisons, more Bone Storms, and more manual casted Corpse Tendrils. Because remember, all the free casted ones from the Sacrilegious, those are all just free. They don't actually use your cooldown. Skeletal Wars, we're going to go for Reapers number two, because 15% chance to carve off a, a corpse for you for free. They also, their wind up attack that they can do every 10 seconds, can proc lucky hit which means you can get more corpses which is really nice and um the overall they just do really they do the most damage for skeletal warriors mages were going for number two because again they fire a shadow free shadow bolt every fourth attack and the shadow mages can now actually proc shadow blight which they could not prior to season one so now shadow mages are one of the best mages to have in the game 
specifically for Shadow Blight builds. And finally, we're going to sacrifice the Golem, which gives us increased critical strike damage. Your minions do critical strike damage. You yourself do critical strike damage with Reap and Shadow Blight. And Corpse Explosion does critical strike damage on the initial pop of Corpse Explosion. And Bone Storm does critical strike damage because it's an actual damaging ability and not a dot. So that's the reason we went with this. Also, I didn't have room on my bar for a Golem. And to be honest, I don't really think the Golems are in the best like possible spot when i was leveling up early 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 on in the game i tried out the golem for a little bit oh sorry right after i got him i tried out the golem for a little bit and he was okay but realistically having other abilities are more beneficial than what the golem brings to the table so on to the build i put in the first chunk of points all the way until we hit shadow blight with the assumption that this is you respecking upon hitting your key passive at the very bottom of the tree so i Put the whole build in here with that assumption and the points are in the order for that reason so reap into acolytes reap blight into supernatural blight so that you and your minions deal 15 percent increased damage three points in huge flesh come on down grab corpse explosion into bloody corpse explosion bone prison into ghastly bone prison for the vulnerable uh three points grim harvest three points fueled by death we're going to come on down here decrepify and to have a horn to crapify so that we get the cdr we're going to go Corpse Tendrils into Plague Corpse Tendrils. Come on down here. Bone Storm into Supreme Bone Storm. Uh, two points Inspiring Leader. One into Death's Defense. And then finally, we're at Shadow Blight. Now, this should be where your respec has completed. And all of the remaining points are what we're going to be doing for the actual leveling of the build from this point forward. So, let's move on up here. We're going to put three points into Skeletal Warrior. The next three levels will put your points into Skeletal Mage Mastery. One into Reaper's Pursuit. One Gloom. One Terror. Put the next two points into Gloom. Three points into Amplify Damage because we're going to have the Aura from Decrepify constantly up. So it's just going to give us free 12% damage. Come on down, grab one more point into Inspiring Leader. One point into Death's Defense, bring you up to two. One point into Bonded in Essence so that you get a little more healing on your minions. Then you come up, put three points into Death's Embrace, and that's going to make it so close enemies are going to do less damage to you, and you're going to do more damage to them. Then I put three points into Necrotic Carapace because it's going to give you more Fortify, which is a 10% damage reduction, so you're going to be a lot tankier because of this one, point, uh, this one ability right here. And then finally, put your last point into Terror, and congratulations, you are now level 50. Now, the leveling route I decided for myself that is most fun for me is actually doing the Tree of Whispers quests. Now, the Tree of Whispers quests are these grim favors that you can get from different things around the world. So, if you complete a dungeon, you're going to get five. If you complete one of the, you know, mid-red ones, so I'll call them mid-red because it's what they kind of look like, you get three, and the light pink ones are going to be worth one. So you can look around the map, find what you want to do. If you wanted to make it as efficient as possible, you would just do two um, dungeons and then go turn it in and then go do two more dungeons, turn it in. You can do it however you choose. I also made it a point to go around and collect basically every single waypoint I could around the world because I like to be able to travel when I want to. Like, for example, there's a legion that's spawning in two minutes. So... Actually, the Legion begins in 57 seconds. So then I would just teleport over to here and then I would run over to the Legion or teleport here and run over to the Legion, however you choose. And um, then you can complete the Legion and you're good to go. So I would also recommend making sure you go and you get all of your waypoints taken care of because that's going to make it much, much more efficient to just travel around. Also, waypoints are worth 20 renown a piece. Strongholds are 100, side quests, the dungeons are worth 40 it all kind of adds up over time as you're doing it and i just enjoy actually going around the world and doing things rather than just running the same dungeons over and over again so that is my method of leveling again you can choose whichever method works best for you as far as what is the funnest or if you just want more efficient then go to world tier 2 get a four-man group and just spam tree of whispers dungeons only turning them in on world tier 2 you get the 20 percent bonus and you can actually do them that way as well to be honest that's what i did at the beginning of the season and it was very very efficient um i was in world tier 3 in about four and a half hours it's very efficient it really is but is it fun not really not really 
So if you're a solo player, hit up every Legion event. Those are super fun because you just run around with a bunch of other people just blasting a whole bunch of mobs that continuously spawn. So do your Legion events if you if you find them fun. If not, just do whatever you find fun. You're going to get experience everywhere in this game. Um, and it's not until you hit World Tier 4 that you have to really try and hyper focus on which is going to be the most efficient way to level. And still at that point, you don't have to do that. You can just play the game however you want to, and eventually you're going to hit level 100 as long as you just keep playing and keep at it anyways. So that is my recommendation for that. But again, thank you all for watching. I really do appreciate it. Let me know down below if there's another video you would like me to make. This one came from a comment, so it was a comment that led to this entire video creation. So let me know if you want to see a video down below, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.